Hello, Internet. Hello, War of the Visions fans. I'm Jackie Fox. I'm going to be starting off with a fight against Venju as I show you the four teams that I played in Arena last week. And this one, uh, one of the things I want to say first, this one is not particularly well suited to the meta. I like all of the characters in it individually. It made a little bit more sense with Velus as a bonus unit, even though it's a lower bonus uh, than Old Doa last week when Velus was a bonus and Old Doa wasn't. They're definitely better old Doa teams, and absolutely, if you're running A2, again, the worst thing for this Ice team is I do not have A2 at the moment, but hopefully there'll be another big, uh, impactful, somewhat meta Ice unit coming. Maybe Tifa can fill in that role. Tifa and old Doa could be very interesting together, perhaps. Um, especially because old Doa has a lot of single target skills as well. Maybe this could pump old Doa's damage, and maybe that would pump her healing factor since she has the HP absorb. But the issue with this team, while it actually builds up against strike resistance pretty well, there's not a lot of strike teams in Arena right now. If I could find them, I would pretty effectively win. And the same is true for my next team. Black Mage team is also very tuned against strike. Which means that we have a better chance than a lot against Aliyah, but Aliyah can still be a problem. The real reason why I think this team is kind of a meta mistake is because it's all magic and ice, which puts you in this awkward situation where newer win teams actually might be able to tank you. Because Dario is a very effective anti-magic tank and unfortunately I don't really have any of these characters super uh, highly reincarnated or anything so especially running into teams that have both Dario who can tank me really effectively and Veritas of the Wind who especially with the recent Legendary Reliquaries release is just a lot I mean this gives you another chance to pick up more of his medals and for every 20 medals you get for him uh, every reincarnation after 140 is going to give him 18 stars. This is the equivalent of six reincarnations at once for any other character. So, I mean, I'm actually getting close to having a Veritas of the Wind that is fully reincarnated. This is uh, really neat for a free unit to be able to reincarnate this quickly and easily. It also really changes the math on how long it takes to build these characters. Like, I'm starting to see 140 Veritas of the Waters, I'm sorry, 120 Veritas of the Waters in Arena in the top ranks. And honestly, on a on a Joom team, I'm not really sure where else she's going to be able to fit. Um, but on a Joom team specifically, she's an amazing support that comes in swinging when she does. So really cool unit there. And she's already very powerful at 120. There is actually a video in here of me losing to her at 120. So... You know, um, even with a really good team, like one of the most meta teams in Arena at the moment, still losing to her with Jim. So that's definitely going to be a very powerful character as people start getting her to 140. And as people start getting her to 140, the fact that you can get even just, just for being in the top 5,000, 60 medals for her. If you ever at 140, that's three reincarnations a week. So effectively, that's 18 reincarnations a week compared to other characters. So that's just, she's going to get very good dramatically fast. And she's going to surpass a lot of other characters because I would assume that there's only a certain subset of this game that's really putting a lot of investment into reincarnation. And if you haven't been putting investment into reincarnation, if you've been keeping your scrolls and all of your awakening materials thus far, this is a really good time to start using them very specifically on new meta characters. That would be currently June, but as I'm writing this, uh, we've got about two days until Ashen King. So Ashen King is going to be another one to just take all the way. And other than that, um, these are probably the most guaranteed highly reincarnated characters in Arena. And like, it's been possible to fully reincarnate Veritas of the Heavens for quite some time now. This Veritas of the Heavens is not fully reincarnated. He also has kind of a weird... Um, <laughs> that's that's not an ideal uh, spear for him. You should probably get the Legendary Reliquaries one, I mean, you know. I assume you're pretty good at Legendary Reliquaries if you have Veritas of the Winds uh, at 140, but 
you know, you really could push this guy's stats a lot further and a lot faster than some other characters, and for free, just by doing well in the legendary reliquaries. And with three of them now bearing his medals, even if you don't do particularly well in any one of them, as long as you're making them into that second wave and getting through a couple of fights, maybe making it through the first four, the first six even, then you should be getting enough to reincarnate him a couple of times for each one of them. So this could be very good for him. But really, I think uh, physical ice teams are doing really well. Old Loa is doing particularly well. I see almost as much of her as I'm seeing of Joom. She's usually playing with Joom. She's up there kind of with, with A2. She is, she is definitely feeling like one of the most uh, used units in higher level arena. And because of this, unfortunately for this team, I don't see a lot of wind. And again, as I explained earlier, because of this team being all magic, um, I, have a, I have a real issue running into um, like just wind teams that I can't easily beat, either because Dario or Veritas of the Winds is too reincarnated. And, you know, it really could be either one of them because on paper, that team can actually beat, you know, any variety of wind team so long as the reincarnations aren't high. If they are, then it starts to become a little bit of a problem, especially if you have those two specific characters. What I should have been doing because I was reaching points, like the only reason that this one, even at the end of the week, didn't make it above a thousand, came close, um, which is still really good. The reason that it didn't maintain a score of over a thousand was mainly because I didn't think to make, like I didn't want to take the time to build the team that you're seeing now up into a, like a full bonus team. But Zazan is a bonus unit, only 50%, but still a bonus unit. And I can use the same VC, so I'm still getting, I want to say with this team, um, it would be either, because I got, I have one of the 100% VCs, but I have a 75% VC, so that's 175, and then... So this team would be 250, the other team, the Earth team, would be 225. So still doing pretty good out of 300, which is the max this week. And if you saw my Gumi Economics video, you'll know that that is the biggest and most effective way to earn points in Arena, is just to have a really high bonus. There are a lot of other factors that factor into it, and I really recommend that video if you haven't seen, I go into a lot of details about how all the various bonus systems work into your score and which ones are most important. And again, it is that. Um, but the thing that you need to understand about the bonus system is that you have three slots for bonuses uh, within that bonus system. One is for a unit. If you have two bonus units on your team, those do not stack. You only get the highest bonus. So if you already have the 100% or the 75% bonus unit, there is no additional benefit to adding a 50% bonus unit or another 75% bonus unit for that matter. Unless they just work together, I'm not telling you you shouldn't. I'm just saying don't bend out of the way of having the best team for this week's meta. Um in order to get another bonus unit that's not actually helping you in score. The other two slots are your main and sub VCs. So if you have two bonus cards in your main slot, none in your v uh, sub slot, then you are only getting through points for one of those bonuses. Even if they were both 100% bonus cards, you would only be getting 100% bonus total. If you moved one of those cards to your VC slot, you would get an additional 100% bonus because now all three slots are active. So this week we have a really good so one of the just the premise of that video was that um arena usually is not the most fair it's a little bit more pay to rank it's not necessarily pay to win because you can still do well in this game as a free to play but if you want to get into specifically like prestige ranks within arena eventually it kind of turns into a biz bidding war there's a whole bunch of issues that really hold you back but the biggest really is that bonus and especially so i but also just being able to pay viz to be able to fight more matches like um, on Reddit, Ready Player Will was talking about if you want to be competitive in Arena, you spend an extra 100 biz a day. So that's going to equate to 10 more fights. You get um, essentially 70 more fights a week by using that strategy. 
but it's worth it to point out that you only get 140 fights even if you use all of your arena orbs throughout the week. This is giving you an additional 50% fights, which is just, a, you know, you still have to win those fights to do well, of course. Um, and that's going to be helped by having the newest stuff and being able to reincarnate a lot and all the other ways that this game helps whales uh, that are more subtle. Um, but really, that having those bonus units is a big deal. And this is also something that like free-to-plays can take advantage of. You can always save up to get those bonus things and then selectively do Arena on the week that you really want to do well. You can even invest that biz into it in that one week. Um, but I think for most players, like investing 700 biz a week into Arena is kind of a ridiculous prospect. And it would also make high rank Arena even more annoying if so many people were doing that. But... I figured that that would make Limited Arena a lot easier for me to get really high rank in. I figured just by the merit of being a, a good player, having a good team, especially having like Joom, so I have like the best unit in the game, even though I don't have like the perfectly, perfectly ideal team for her, I do have a really good team for her. I have one of the, like, I don't know, top four or five maybe uh, teams for Joom. And. You know, I thought I had a chance at, like, hitting the top 100, maybe. And what happened was, even though I got up to, like, 34th in the mock, just because I kept refilling, just refilling, infinite refills for those two days, um, this score you gain there does not affect your, your final score at all. Um, but it allowed me to fight against the top tier teams I was going to be going up against. But I just never got back up there on five five refills a day. It was a lot of fights, and like there were a lot of people competing, and this this brought a lot of people into the game, which is good. Um, that a lot of people wanted to compete for those titles, but that also made the ranks really dense. It was really hard to rise up, and honestly, the scores were a little bit more evenly distributed, so you didn't have as many moments where you climb up a ton of ranks. I mean, of course, you do at the very beginning, but like the place where it started to be like you couldn't gain 50 to 100 ranks at once was a little bit closer to 2,000 than it is maybe like 1,000. Um, I'm not saying that you'll do that every time at those at those scores, but you know, when, when you hit one of those pockets, when you break out of a pack, you know, you can jump ahead like 100 at a time sometimes. This is my second team. This team is doing really well. I posted about this one because it was getting some really nuts uh, win streaks. Even though I wasn't entirely sure what I should play it against, um, it's definitely spec to have a lot of strike resistance. It's also going to have. Um, I mean, really, that's one of the biggest things it has. It has a number of like physical defensive properties, a lot of self healing. Um, also some reflect here from Helena, so it could deal with some magic, although it doesn't usually face off against that as much. Um, I'm just gonna ask it by this team though. Uh, but yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't always mean the most. And, oh god, if we could just get rid of this one fucking Bradley who's assassinating everyone on my team, this would be great. But we've got, like, a, an evasion unit that we can't deal with that's in our faces, and a tank that we can't deal with. <laughs> it's just too much. Um, but this team actually did really well against a number of things, in that it is... You know, there was, there was a risk of this team becoming meta at one point, and a lot of the newer units have magic resistance in a way that can be really bad for this. This might be one of those matchups where, like, Dario just tanks the entire team. Um, but, they're, but, but we're kind of settling into a place where it's rapidly going back to physical. I think some of these anti magical units won't see as much play like Dario may be an exception because he's going to work really well with Katana but if there are no magic units to defend against and he's not as good against physical then you're probably going to find a different way in a more physical meta you may still use him he is still pretty great in a lot of ways but wow yeah we got stomped um <laughs> But once people kind of reorganize into a position, maybe especially Spring Dream is a pretty big problem for that team. 
which is a pretty major reason why I was having trouble climbing. But even then, um, only about half of the teams maybe are Joom inclusive. And you're going to see a lot of these because I'm going to be filtering through all sorts of different builds to try to find things I can beat. Miranda can be a problem, but I think that's probably one of the safer bets that I've seen so far. But holy shit, someone's using Crace. This is just a giveaway. Thanks for the points, my dude. Um... <laughs> But those other half of teams, like, there's a lot of them that actually do go down pretty easily to that wombo combo of, like, magic and status and durability and self-healing. And, you know, again, maybe once we get past, like, King Mont's gonna be such a pain in the ass for that team, too. Like, it's, it's, uh, why do you have so much silence, my man? Uh-huh. Also, um... Wood of Calc may have incorrectly uh, translated the master ability, or maybe I read it wrong. It seems it increases his chance of silence while he has bells active. And speaking of that, one tip for someone who has watched 16 minutes into this video, thank you so much for sticking with my content like this and driving up those like watch through numbers. But, um, Thanks for making it 16 minutes. One of the best counters to a lot of what Ashen King is doing, it's definitely not going to like defang him, but it is a way to kind of neutralize him. Uh, other than slow, slow can be really, really helpful against Ashen King. He likes to haste himself. He is very fast, so he's very threatening when hasted. So inflicting slow not only removes haste from him, but also lowers his speed so it makes him a lot easier to deal with but the other thing is the uh veritas of the winds tmr so if you haven't picked up on it yet if you haven't done those uh legendary reliquaries if for some reason the blood sword plus one which is probably the ideal weapon for uh ash and king mont if you don't have the plus one maybe not the regular blood sword if if you haven't gotten into that yet but the plus one fully maxed is definitely his best sword. His, the sword that's coming with him, though, will be a pretty good uh, thing if you don't have that. It's pretty well designed for him. But um, if you haven't picked up on it yet, like the Veritas of the Winds is going to be pretty helpful here. Um, especially since uh, Earth Ashenmont teams are going to have a lot of trouble with pure wind teams still. And I think a big part of that, like, I don't, and honestly, I'm not even sure how Dario stacks into that. He has always been a little bit versatile, so maybe you could get him to go for that, but I think maybe even Joom would be better off um, as, a, as a tank against Ashen King. I think she even, yeah, maybe. Um... Just because she is meant to be played against physical. But I think Dario's new enough to still also be pretty good. But I think that really, ultimately, the thing that is going to determine, you know, how consistently Win wins that matchup is how reincarnated your Veritas of the Winds is as well as you using his TMR most effectively to turn off Ashen King's ability to regenerate AP as well as the rest of his team. This can really mess with a lot of people, and it's not just that it turns it off, but it also nullifies it for two turns. So if they have bells active before your skill goes off, then it's going to nullify that. It's going to turn bells off for them. Um, if they try to activate it, say, like, Sephiroth's Veil of Woe gives him, like, a barrier and AP restore, he would only get the barrier if he activated that two turns after that TMR activation. So this definitely gives you the chance to get in range of the Ashen King and start dealing damage before he has the chance to put AP Auto Restore on himself. And at that point, his his AI may not choose to do that, may choose to attack instead. He's still going to be dangerous, but you are going to remove that most uh, onerous part of him and really make... Ashen King users have to focus more on AP consumption down strategies um, because he's going to eat some AP. But, you know, he's really made to have AP auto restore, and nullifying that is a big deal against him. So, 
thing to keep in mind for countering the Ashen King, and also a thing to keep in mind for building the Ashen King, that, uh, that AP consumption down is going to be pretty helpful for him. Especially if you are running into people who are commonly using the strategy, and this is going to be a good one for dealing with him specifically. But as you can see, this lightning team cuts through most things. Like, it can also deal with some off things. Um, it's kind of sad that I'm seeing more wind up here than I was when I was playing ice, but, um, you know, we can deal with some of those wind teams as well. And it can deal with actually a lot of the water teams. I know I had kind of hyped and said that June was beating my lightning teams, or at least certain teams were. And I even named those teams, and they still do on occasion. I don't like to fight them. Um, but basically, June, Summer Glaciella is probably the the preferred second. But I think you could get away with Elda and Ferris and Joom. But I think that Summer Glaciella is really like the the real winner here. And Elda probably is also the better of Elda and Ferris. Um, Ferris is pretty cool though. I, I don't think like any of those teams are bad or any of those characters are bad. They're, they're clearly like the four best water units and they're all strong enough to really mess with basically anything else in the game at this moment. But, um, but teams like that, like, again, this is probably another place where it comes down to who is reincarnated more, because if you push some of those characters, some of those water characters over that edge, and this may even be primarily, like, how reincarnated the Doom is specifically, but if you push some of those characters over the edge, they can be really troublesome. So here we are looking at my water team, and my water team can also take on a number of... I mean, seeing as it is comprised of three of those top four units that I just mentioned, I can run into a lot of water teams that are running other units and just beat on them. So uh, one, of, one of the exceptions to this, though, that was probably hardest for me to deal with, uh, this 120 Folka is giving me a lot of trouble, as you can see. But... Um, one of the other ones that really surprised me as being absolutely troublesome was Miranda. Miranda's LB upgrade. Um, her LB, I think it's her LB, or maybe it was like Waterga or something. She has a very wide AoE sleep move. Um, it's like... <sighs> It's only a very small part of what makes Helena the Black Rose a powerful unit, but the ability to sleep somebody's entire team is an incredible wild card move that can just just ruin even a good matchup for somebody. So, you know, that really throws a curveball into some of these teams to where, like, if the other two units that they have, so if, like, it's Joom, Summer Glaciella, and Miranda then that's strong enough to really mess me up. I didn't realize I had a second uh, Folka fight here. Am I going to lose two Folka fights in a row? Good grief. But yeah, I think, uh, I think if you're running kind of a unit that is not one of those four, it makes it even more important that you have Summer Glaciala on your team. My dude, why am I fighting this again? I I don't even understand my own logic here. What what's going on? Am I having a stroke? Did I cut the same fight in here like three times? What is happening? Cause this looks like the first one. Okay, whatever. Who knows what's happening? Maybe I am having a stroke. It's an instant replay, if nothing else. No, this this one doesn't quite seem to be playing out the same way either. Uh, 
I don't know. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Earth teams that have made their way into the top, fighting the lightning teams that are fighting teams like mine. Um, kind of your like your tertiary beneficiary of the June meta. Uh, those are once again pretty easy for the next generation water teams to beat in most cases. Evasion can give them a little bit of trouble, especially if you aren't running Omnilus or uh, Elda. But Elda or Omnilus can deal with evasion units pretty well. That if the rest of your team is strong enough to kind of support him and keep him from taking too much damage to get wiped. Um, then he can really mess up evasion teams. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even see Ferris there. <laughs> it's a good thing she's there, because I think I was about to get trucked in this fight. Okay, good deal. <laughs> Jum going down early was not good, and that courage remove really sucked. And, mm, yep, it's another one of those courage removal protection not being the best thing in the world kind of deals. This team I think I can beat as well. This is actually a pretty decent win team here. And um, another issue that Aldoa Old specifically um, has going into win teams at the moment. Again, just feel like every member of the ice team I showed you before is kind of a mistake for going into Modern Wind. But um, although it doesn't really have much in the way of Pierce resistance, which is making uh, Veritas of the Winds especially threatening for her, even with a good amount of wind resistance, he can still do a good bit of damage, especially with that AoE shred mechanic that he has on him. Um, just really powerful in that. And I, <laughs> Water deals with it better. Um, Personally, I think. So, this guy, uh, this guy I think I can beat pretty reliably. Like, that, that match worked out real well for me. So, uh, since it seems to be pretty consistent, I like LD getting out in front here, by the way. Like, he's, he's already wrecking them, but he's also taking the damage from them really, really well. And hopefully they're kind of burning out before he gets to June. Fair is coming in with that, like, HP recover right there is just great. Like, really, really adding a lot to the stay of the scene while still hitting hard. So that gets us up to 80. And this team, for the most part, was within the top 100 all week. I think it got up to about, like, top 50 at best. Just because the, the other thing about Arena this week... Um, because, like, I talked about how Arena tends to be less fair. And then it's kind of ironic because the week after that, I'm talking about, like, Arena, uh, limited Arena being more fair because of the lack of visitor stores. And then we go into non-limited Arena, and I do so much better. <laughs> Even without, like, using the visitor store system too much. For this team, I did use about 300 Vizior to restore... Um, so that would get me an extra 30 matches, which, I mean, honestly, it is quite, quite a bit. It is, I don't know, it made me feel a little bit weird, but I also realized that this is, like, the week when, uh, everybody who is really serious about Arena is potentially burnt out from last week and wasn't competing super hard, so it was really easy to get a lot of all the teams that I wouldn't have expected into the top ranks, and... I mean, this was definitely one I would expect to see in the top ranks, but at the same time, uh, I didn't really have to spend a lot to keep up with people here. And it's kind of interesting, like, he probably overtook me after this video, but um, keep in mind that I'm spending about half the busy on this than Ready Player Will was saying that he was. And look, I don't want to make any assumptions or untoward comparisons here, but... If he's spending 100 biz a day, and I'm spending roughly 50 biz a day, um, by the end of this video, you're going to see me pass him in rank. And I did this pretty much every day. In fact, um, I usually ended up about 10 ranks ahead of him. I couldn't usually get much further than that. And he would usually catch up with me at some point. I don't know how he ended the week. I just know that I ended the day. I, I, I do get the feeling that he plays a lot in the mornings, because I've seen him catch up by the time I'm awake, or maybe he plays very late at night. That could also be a thing. Um, but in either case, we seem to be doing about as well as each other, at least this week in Arena. So, 
I, I feel like that's pretty good for my team. Or maybe he's taking it easy this week. Maybe he's not spinning fizz. Maybe, uh... I don't know. But, um, got a few more matches here for you to watch. Uh, my dog is being annoying. So let me go, uh, talk to her for a second and get her to quit barking. And then I'll be back for the outro. All right, it looks like she was barking at the neighbor doing construction. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you learned something from this. If only uh, how to better leverage your bonuses in Arena to get more points. But uh, really appreciate everyone for tuning in. Thank you so much. Be sure to like and subscribe. Also, leave a comment. In fact, uh, I would like you to start doing a new thing. If you're if you've watched to this point, I thank you. Um, please comment if you see your name in this video or any of my arena videos. I want to know how many of my commenters are actually competition here. Um, and then I would actually like to start facing off against your teams in the videos, like. I mean, how, how better could I make it personalized to my subscribers than testing their teams personally when I see them in Arena? Now, I have to see you in Arena, so uh, you might have to catch up and you might not face against the team that you particularly want to see yourself go up against, but um, just saying, it would be a really cool thing for me to know, like, because not everyone uses the same YouTube handle as their, you know, as their, like, in-game handle for instance. Like Ready Player Will, that's easy to identify, but as far as I know, Ben's T is, well, it's not Benju, because I know Benju. <laughs> I know where Benju's at. Um, we saw him at the beginning of the video, but, uh, you know, it could be, potentially, you know, because it doesn't have to line up. It's not like you're logging in with your YouTube handle or something. So let me know if that's you. Also, check out the link in the description. I've got books for sale, new hardback, uh, fantasy fiction, realistic fiction, or fantasy fiction, or an intertwining of both within kind of like a cyberpunk feel if you want. All sorts of books are available for all of your desires. So check that out to support the channel. Like and subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next one.